Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. Today we are going to talk about design and simulation of half wave AC to DC control rectifier used for RL load. Previously we saw about half wave rectifier uh, in case of an R load but this is with respect to RL. One of the major differences is that due to the presence of inductance the current still continues to flow in the negative cycle as well. So you'll be having a little amount of voltage flowing in the negative direction. So that can be clearly visible in the waveform uh, that I'll be showing in the demo. So uh, let us get into the design part of it. So the design basically contains these uh, given data. One of the most important data required is the beta angle and uh, that's called as the ex extension angle the point where uh, the output voltage will be equal to zero and uh, the power factor once we have these two values we will be able to proceed further you cannot randomly assume these values so please make a note of it you have to ask for this data if you are doing your experiment in laboratory or you can also ask for output voltage and you can uh, correspondingly find the value so the first step is to determine the average value of output voltage which is given by the formula. One of the commonly made mistakes here is Vm should be substituted as 230 into root 2. So that is the uh, important uh, point in this particular uh, step. Next step is to determine the RMS value of output voltage. So in this uh, one of the most commonly made mistakes is you have to keep your calculator in radians or uh, you can substitute the value of uh, beta in degrees and multiply it with uh, pi by 180 in order to convert it into radians and then solve this equation. So next step is to determine the inductance value, one of the most important steps because people are randomly choosing inductance value which is not at all correct. So phi is equal to tan inverse of omega L by R is the formula. We know the value of uh, uh, phi uh, that is 18.19 degree by uh, substituting it with a power factor that is given. So once we have this, the next step is to determine the value of L by substituting it back in the formula. So one of the commonly uh, involved thought process is how do you enter the value of alpha in MATLAB? So because in MATLAB, if you open the pulse generator block, you will have something uh, to be entered in seconds. That is the phase delay in seconds. So uh, it's very difficult to uh, convert degrees into seconds so this is a simple procedure of converting that frequency is 50 hertz usually in indian standards uh, time period for uh, the frequency of 50 hertz is 0 0.02 seconds so every 360 degree contains 0 0.02 seconds that means 180 degree contains 0 0.01 seconds so therefore every degree corresponds to 5.55 into 10 power minus 5 seconds so if you are doing it for 30 degree multiply it with the standard uh, value of 5.55 into 10 power minus 5 seconds you will be getting the value in seconds so you have to enter this value as a phase delay in pulse generator block. So once we are done with the design procedure, we can go to MATLAB and get started with the simulation process. All right, here we are in MATLAB. So uh, here we go. This is a Simulink library browser where you can uh, search for the components that are required. First thing that I'm going to search is a power cube block. So this is the most important block uh, for that matter for simulation to take place. If you don't have power cube, the simulation will not take place uh, because uh, simple reason because it's uh, used to uh, uh, consider the simulation time in uh, discretization and continuous time domain. So that is the uh, important uh, aspect of it. Uh, you need a current measurement block, add that. So we need an AC voltage source. So search for AC voltage. So once you search, you will be getting it over here. Add this block as well. Next step is you need a thyristor. So search for thyristor in particular. So you will be getting it directly. Um, so it is uh, right below over here add this block as well uh, we need a series rlc branch so we need um, a scope to display the output waveform so search for scope you will be getting scope add this block to the uh, the model uh, we also need a display block so to display the amount of output voltage to just give the magnitude of it not the waveform so don't get confused here so we'll add this block as well. So uh, once this is done, uh, we need RMS value and uh, um, mean value to be measured uh, according to our calculation. So search for mean, you will be getting both RMS and mean. One of the most important step is we don't need this RMS value. This is some used for a different purpose. Come, scroll down, you will have RMS value over here Add this block. You have mean, be careful with mean phaser that is not used. You need to use normal mean value. And uh, once that is done, you need a pulse generator to trigger the thyristor. Search for pulse generator block and add this block as well. So once we have all these blocks, let's arrange them according to the position where they are essentially supposed to be. So the waveform should be displayed across the load and uh, thyristor across the source side, supply across this. 
an ammeter you can be used to, to display the waveform and uh, you need an voltmeter to measure it across the this is the power give block as i already said earlier so let's start inputting the parameters so one of the commonly made mistakes uh, while entering parameters is here you have to enter 230 into root 2 that is 325.26 so enter that value uh, the frequency according to indian standards is 50 so we'll be selecting that next step is to uh, look at this and we don't need a measurement port disable that uh, we are uh, coming into one of the most important aspects of entering the parameters so uh, let us set the time period in seconds that is 0 0.01 seconds as i already mentioned earlier uh, with respect to half cycle we'll consider um, this is the pulse width the pulse width doesn't affect your output in this case because it will eventually get turned off so one of the important uh, aspects of entering the parameters uh, is uh, the phase delay as I already told you earlier uh, we have to enter it in uh, uh, with respect to seconds so I already showed you the calculation pre previously so refer to that we'll be entering 1.665 into 10 power minus 3 so uh, once this is done we'll start connecting the blocks according to our circuit diagram rotate this and uh, we will be uh, selecting the type of uh, component as RL load. Uh, the resistance value is uh, 10 ohm and the inductance value is 10 milli uh, Henry. So select that and uh, close that block. So uh, we will be connecting it according to our circuit diagram. A current uh, measurement block should be connected in series to measure the current um, in the circuit. And then we will be connecting the pulse generator across the gate terminals. Uh, one of the most important steps here is to double click on these RMS value and change it to 50 Hertz uh, otherwise you will not get the exact value uh, because the synchronization within the system will not take place according to MATLAB you will get a different value slightly different value not a, a huge deviation but uh, we are preferring any exact value in this case so we'll follow these steps we will be measuring the output voltage uh, across this point and uh, we also have uh, the mean value that can be measured and uh, we also have the RMS value that can be measured at this point. Uh, we can use uh, another display just to display both these values simultaneously. So I'll be copy pasting that. Um, so connect these acro across these points. And once this is done, I guess we are uh, good with the overall circuit. Enter the simulation time as uh, 0.1 seconds or 0.5 seconds. These are static loads. You don't need a huge amount of simulation time. So uh, click on run. Here you can see uh, these are uh, according to our design values. We are getting almost uh, the values closer to it. So uh, we can also display the waveform uh, of the current waveform as well by connecting this. Uh, I haven't used it, but uh, you can do that. Uh, so we are not getting exact values because of the resistance, the snubber resistances and internal forward drops and resistance across the side resistor. So there will be little deviation with respect to it. Let's check the waveform by double clicking on the scope and uh, confirm if we are getting the desired uh, waveform so here we are uh, so let's uh, zoom in this uh, and uh, see it properly so over here you can see uh, the value of the output voltage going towards the negative direction just because of the fact that current still continues to flow in the circuit because of the presence of inductance larger value of inductance will uh, further have a huge uh, uh, deviation in the negative slope of the output voltage so uh, that is uh, the deviation and you can see a sharp increase in this point this is due to the switching action um, that is uh, going to take place the the thyristor pretends to again continue to conduct but uh, it it is aware that it does not have enough uh, current in the forward direction its current is less than holding current and it suddenly drops so that's it uh, for today if you have any questions please do uh, let me know uh, by typing in your questions in the comment box uh, if you like this video please do like it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thank you